You're welcome back to the conversation in New Central Television. It's now time for us to switch gears to events in Congo, Brazzaville. The government of Congo, uh, Brazzaville, has refuted reports of a coup attempt against President Denis Sassou who had held office for 39 years earlier. Social media and news outlets had claimed a coup was in progress while the president attended the 78th United Nations General Assembly in New York suggested involvement of the Presidential Guards Commander. Information Minister Pierre Mungala dismissed these reports on social media, emphasizing the nation's calm and urging people to go about their activities. The government's official website also issued a statement denying the coup attempt allegations. Recent months have seen a spate of coups in Africa, including neighboring Gabon, where the military took control. President Denis Sasso Ngueso came into power through a military coup in 1979. And despite losing the first multi-party elections in 1992, he regained authority in 1997 following a civil war. He now ranks as the third longest serving president in Africa, following Theodoro Obiang of Equatorial Guinea and Paul Beer of Cameroon. Now, joining me, uh, this evening to discuss this is Uluwashi Adegoke Adeyemo, a publisher of Inside Watch Africa. He joins us live from Lagos, Nigeria. But before I get to Mr. Adeyemo, let's try and understand who this man is, uh, President uh, Denis Sasso Ngerso. Who is he and uh, how has he ruled uh, for so long? I believe we have uh, some visuals to uh, you know, make us understand who this person is. Dennis Sasso Ngueso served as Congo's president since uh, 1979, took a short break, then came back in 1997. He became president of the all rich Central African nation through a coup in 1979. Uh, he's 79 years old, and uh, President Ngueso has served as the president of the Congo for 39 years now, accumulatively. Uh, as I did uh, say in my opening submission, I'd like to bring uh, in Mr. Adeyemo, Uluashe Adegoke Adeyemo, into the conversation, uh, the publisher of Inside uh, Watch Africa. A warm welcome to you, Mr. Adeyemo, and thanks for joining us on the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. It's good, it's good, it's good, I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you join us on this uh, conversation. Now, Mr. Adeyemo, with President Denis Sasso Ngueso's nearly four-decade-long rule, uh, could you delve into the factors that have contributed to his political longevity, especially in the light of the recent debunked coup attempt reports? I mean, 39 years is quite a long time. Now, for me, that is why it is something that um, one should not rejoice over um, when we talk about coups in Africa, because again, this is a product of coups, two coups. Um, the second one was a civil war and um, brought him back to power. Uh, again, we have him ruling, you know, um, almost, um, you know, accumulating for 39 years. And the truth is, as rich as uh, Congo Brazzaville is, uh, they've not been able to get anything tangible from their wealth. In fact, for me, it is worrisome that um, Africa is this rich. We have the Democratic Republic of Congo, very rich in natural resources. We have um, Gabon, very, very rich in natural resources. We have um, Congo, uh, Brazzaville, very, very rich in natural resources. Uh, Niger, very, very rich in natural resources. And we are generally poor. And so this is becoming a case where it's unexplainable mm. for a people to be so rich and at the same time so poor. And for me, you know, a lot of explanation needs to be given, you know, by the superpowers who unfortunately will run to and at the end of the day would always be complicit, you know, in all of this rap that is going all over the place. So it, it's a really, really big problem for us in Africa because at the end of the day, whether they are military rulers, whether they are politically elected, what we have had is managers who continuously mismanage 
our wealth and have continued to impoverish us as a people. You know, so you have a person who have had the privilege to have ruled for 39 years and is unable to show anything concrete, you know, as regards development for his people. And so, you know, right now, uh, internet has been cut off, communication has been disconnected in that country. Yes, the Minister of Information has come out to say, oh, there have not been any coup, but the truth of the matter is something is obviously going on. Because, of course, since the coup in Gabon, which is a neighboring country, everyone had mm -hmm. continued to suspect that something was going to happen anyway in, in Congo, Brazzaville. So it, it's actually a very complicated matter for us right now in Africa. We don't want coups because it is obvious that those who come in by coups never really deliver. And unfortunately, those who come in, you know, their supposed political exercise are also fading us, you know. So it, it, it's actually a dilemma we, where we uh, found ourselves in Africa. Quite, quite a dilemma, to say the least. Now, Mr. Ademo, you did talk about uh, the sit-tight leaders with the example of what has happened in, the, uh, in Congo, Brazzaville. And this is uh, a pretext uh, for military intervention. A lot of uh, when these uh, soldiers come in, they use this as a reason. And uh, I mean, it's hard to fault them. Uh, like you say, we've seen quite a lot of sit tight leaders in Africa, uh, from Paul B and Cameroon. Uh, you have your Wari Museveni in Uganda. There's also Obiang, who uh, tops that list in Equatorial Guinea. And of course, uh, the subject of our discussion this evening, Dennis Sasso Ngueso in Congo Brazzaville. How have this individuals, I mean, that govern countries with millions of citizens been able to remain in power? I mean, some as long as four decades. Uh, and you also mentioned international uh, development partners in the West. We continue to do business uh, with these people. What has managed to keep them in office for so long? Unfortunately, they control the power. The president is the commander in chief of armed forces. Um, it is Susaida. It was uh, President Babangida who says that anybody who stands and go against the commander in chief of armed forces is standing in front of a running trailer. Mm. And so you don't want to commit suicide unless, by chance, God give us a leak on you who believes that when you live in this world, you eventually die, mm. and whatever you acquire. Um, Chief Akintola Williams was 104. He was the first chartered accountant in, in Africa. He just died, you know. So with all his accomplishments, with with all his very very sterling, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, qualification, he eventually died. And so these other people, we we pray they will understand that whatever they acquire, whatever they become, whatever kingdom they build for themselves, they will eventually die. The question is, whilst you have the opportunity, what did you do for your people? Because, look, whether we like it or not, it's almost impossible to wrestle government out of uh, someone who's got the power. Um, recently, we had our own you know, uh, experience in Nigeria. We just came out of a court ruling, and it was clear that the way our laws were designed it is almost impossible to challenge, you know, the sitting government and be able to win, you know. So I honestly do not know how we will be able to get out of this dilemma that we have found ourselves. The only thing I believe we can do is for all of us to continue to hope that we would have the right thinking people who understand that life is ephemeral and that everything that has a beginning will have an end and that they don't really need all this kingdom, all this power. Now, Mr. Day, I'm sorry to interrupt you. How complicit Why? is the uh, international community and the African Union in sustaining this uh, sort of sit-tight uh, leadership? Because you expect them to have a, a sort of peer review mechanism to say, look, if you're not governing your people properly, you're only inviting the military uh, to take over. Do you think they have this sort of frank uh, discussions at the level of the African Union? I mean, this is a very simple answer. I mean, the thing we need to ask ourselves is, 
So what has the conversation be? What are the line of intervention that we've had from them? How well have they spoken against government or people who continue to sit tight, assert themselves, and you know, rule us, make us more poor, even though we're sitting you know, on, on, on a very wealthy nation? So it is clear that they're com complicit because at the end of the day, they are the ones. You just give an example of, uh, of uh, um, Gabon. You know, they used to buy um, the, um, um, uh, what's the raw material that they had for about 87? And the oh, new, Niger, the uranium. Niger. Yes, in Niger. Yes, yes. uranium. You know, that it's, it's actually worth, you know, more than 200 and something, you know, dollars. You know, so who are the ones buying them? And across Africa. So the truth of the matter is, without wanting to sound, you know, negative, it is clear that the people who buy these things, the people who sell off guns, ammunition, definitely are benefiting from the arrangement that is on ground. It is clear. I mean, this there is no it's not rocket science to see that what we really need, and until we get them being true to us, being really honest and dealing with us equitably, we're really not going to get out of this because they're obviously benefiting from our folly from our failure, from the way we have continued to conduct ourselves, from the way we have continued to rule ourselves, and they would continue to encourage these kind of people to continue to sit at the end of affairs and keep us, you know, permanently poor, because, like I said, it is to your advantage. Mm. Now, Mr. Adeyemo, well, before I ask my next question, I would like to put up the statement by uh, the Congo Brazzaville's Minister of Information denying the school theory uh, Mongala. He says uh, uh, the information suggests serious events that are underway in Brazzaville. The government denies this fake news. We reassure the public opinion about the calm that reigns and invite people to calmly go about their activities. Now, Mr. Adeyemo, given uh, the government's prompt denial of the fake coup attempt, uh, can you elaborate on the strategies that governments use to manage and counter false narratives and how do these strategies impact public trust and political stability because a lot of people felt you know i mean why not looking at the contagion uh of coups in west africa and you also have a set tight leader i mean many people were hoping uh, for this to be true what's your response uh, to this true, true. some of us are not hoping that it's true because Again, we're really not going to get too much from the, uh, from the military. But, um, of course, to answer your question directly, um, before now, um, after the election last year, they've done uh, a yeoman's job in making sure that communication, you know, in and out of, uh, of, of, of uh, Congo Brazzaville has been very, very difficult. A couple of friends of ours have tried to, you know, they've tried to call in to find out what exactly is going on right now. And it's been very, very difficult mm. because you can't reach them online. You can reach them, um, you know, um, uh, you know, there are a lot of lines, you know. So truth of the matter, it, it, it's, they, they know how to do this. They know how to quench communication. They know how to disconnect their people. They've done it over and over and over again. And like I said, they've got the guns, they've got the jails, uh, you know, if you talk too much, they, 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 they latch on you and they throw you behind bars. And, uh, you know, nobody really wants to really die. But unfortunately, we're, we're dying, you know, gradually, all of us. Because uh, if we have as much as we have and we, we are as poor uh, as we are, then we're just dying. You know, because um, at the end of the day, we're living in a world where all sorts of things are happening to us and we do not have the wealth without to, 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 to stand against it. Because, you know, beyond the fact that we are able to use our wealth, we're having incursions, we're having uh, Islamic groups coming in through our borders and they come in at will, they come rape our people, they destroy our lands, they take away the little that we have, we cannot farm, they take away our farm produce. We have our own share in Nigeria with the Boko Haram and all of that. And because we don't have really formidable, you know, defense for ourselves, these people are able to do what they mm. want to do over and over again. You know, so it's like just being bashed on every side. You're being impoverished. You're being exposed to unnecessary danger, avoidable dangers, dangers that can actually be quenched 
if things were done in a proper way. You know, so mm. these people that have continued to perpetuate themselves in government have mastered the, you know, the, the, the strategy of ensuring that we can talk. They continue to power us down. Yes. And so now, now, now Mr. Adam, I'm sorry to talk. interrupt you because we have less right, than two yes. minutes uh, right. to go and I don't right. want to end this conversation without asking this question about President Nguesso's uh, 39 years in power. His uh, historical rise of power through a military coup is a defining aspect of his leadership. Now, how have his policies and governance evolved over the years? What's your assessment of his stay in power? And uh, what would you like to say is his legacy? I mean, some would look at it and say, you know, we're better than our neighbors uh, just across uh, the Congo River in, in Kinshasa. So that's an achievement in itself, we are quite stable. What's your uh, analysis and assessment of the uh, Ungeso presidency? Clearly, everywhere in the world, the key uh, assessment for any government is that the wealth, you know, well-being of its people um, are improved. They have better roads, they have better infrastructures, um, the GDP is growing. Now, the question, I mean, the answer is on the table. Since he has assumed you know, uh, government, the people are not doing better than they were doing. 39 years down the line, the people are more impoverished. Is it that they don't have uh, wealth that you can turn around as a manager? You know, it's simple. You know, you have employee manager to run an organization and you give them all that they need to be able to thrive. And at the end of the day, the company has continued to fail over and over and over again. And the company is exposed to all sorts of dangers, all sorts of, um, you know, all sorts of negativity from in and out mm. the area. That, for me, is the assessment. It is okay. very, very unfortunate. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Luashe uh, Adegoke Adeyemo, publisher Inside Watch Africa, who joins us live from Lagos, Nigeria. We do appreciate uh, your insights uh, and contribution to the program. Thank you very much. I look forward to engaging uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.